Welcome to my long presentation where I'm going to be um, discussing uh, Indiana Science Center 4 point ESS K1, so fourth grade Earth and Space Science Standard 1. And it says, investigate how the moon appears to move through the sky and it changes day to day, emphasizing the importance of how the moon impacts the Earth, the rising and setting times, and solar and lunar eclipses. So this would be lessons that I would do throughout a month, um, just because the moon changes day to day, especially within a month. So at the beginning of the lesson, I, or like the month, I would give them the worksheet. It looks like this. I found it online. It's the moon phases. It goes through the moon phases. And then it has a nice calendar where they can fill in what the moon looks like every day for a month after they put the days, of course. Um, and then I also put the month on the top. So April has all the days. I didn't color it in, obviously, also because I just painted it off. Um, and then probably that same day, maybe a week later, after introducing the moon phases, I would do the moon phases. Um, the moon phases experiment slash demonstration that we did in class a while back. It's um, on page 160 of Dr. Lyle's book, and essentially it's just like a um, where you take a flashlight, which I have a giant flashlight, and then a um, ball, and then um, just moving around, like watching the, seeing the, having somebody move around and see the different reflections of, or different um, phases of the moon, seeing how that works. Um, that would be the first week we would go over that, answer some questions about the moon phases, and then we would talk about the moon phases um, calendar. Um, also with this, one of the important things was the rising and setting times, and so I would have them probably just like look it up online. It's going to be the easiest. They'll probably be asleep during the rising time or setting time, depending on the grade I teach. Um, so I would have them just look up and put the rising and setting times in the little boxes after they color in what it is. So then the second week, I would have them do, so we would do, the first experiment would be where somebody um, is sitting and somebody else is holding a flashlight and somebody else is moving around with the ball, um, figuring out, you know, watching the moon, or watching how much is, you can, how much of the moon is visible. For the second um, experiment or demonstration I would do, it would be about the tides, um, the moon and the tides, um, because this kind of affects how, or the moon, this is how the moon affects the earth or impacts the earth. And I found this experiment or demonstration on Science Buddies, thought it was really great. So essentially, they would get a packet like this, this one, uh, the first page is a chart and it's the tides during the first quarter moons. The second page has the um, tides during the full moons in the year. And then the last page um, is when there will be um, all the different types of moons and during the time or like when they will appear in 2020. So I have but then I would look at the first quarter and the full moon. That's when I would look at the, uh, for the dates. And they really just need that for the date. So January 2nd, February 1st. Like, they just need it for the dates to fill in for the first quarter moon and the second quarter moon, to, or the full moons, fill in the dates for those. Um, I expect that that would take a little bit of time. The next part of this project is really just moving into um, researching. Um, so we go to what I found on Science Buddies website is it says to go to the um, NOAA website, um, tie predictions. So I would probably make a Canvas assignment if that's whatever learning management system it is. Make a um, assignment or add the documents onto that page so that they can go and do it themselves, or with a partner, or whatever I decide. Um, but they go to that website, and then from the website, you then go and just pick a state. I chose Florida. I'm doing this as I'm recording, not that you can see. I am choosing Florida, 
And then you will also need to um, find a station. So ties in current map, and then you just kind of zoom into where you want to go. So I would, I, um, you can also just type in, which is honestly probably easier. So I did Sanibel Island because I love Sanibel and I just clicked on the first one I saw and then you can, um, it'll bring it up. There'll be a button you can press that says Tide Predictions. You go and click that. And then you can click for the annual published tide tables and it'll give you a PDF of it. So then after that, I would have them measure the height of the tide, um, the high tide and low tide from the dates that they put down. It would just be the first high tide and the first low tide of the day. And then I would also find them, have them find the range of the day. But then I would have them um, use the range. So the range is the high minus the low, it's the range. Have them graph the ranges with two different colors on a graph. They can do it probably online would be easiest, but I would probably do it on paper, add in a little bit of math skills as well. And then they can make a line graph using graph paper in different colors and compare the tides during the first moon or first quarter moons and the tides during full moons. We can ask questions like, okay, so how does the moon affect the tides? Like, when is it high? When is it low? Um, is it higher during one? Is it lower during the other? Things like that. How does it affect? So then that would be another week. So it would be like a week by week basis. And then the third week would be about eclipses. We'd go over what eclipses are, the lunar and the um, solar. Um, and then I also, I found this experiment online, but then I was looking through the book to find the moon phases. And it's also in the book. It's on page 166, 166 of the um, Dr. Lyle's book. And this one I can do by myself, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. So I have a flashlight, which is the sun. I have a mini soccer ball, which is going to be the earth. And then you're going to laugh, but a small tomato for the moon. So essentially, you just take it and you make, you'd have to do it in a darker room. If it was darker, I can get in a room at this point in the day, but I don't have curtains. And the, there's no dark room in our house. So you can take the small, I wish I could show this a little bit better, but you take the small ball, whatever. You can use a big ball and a golf ball. I couldn't find either of those, which was beyond me, but this was gonna, this was the best thing, and this is our earth. So the earth obviously is further away. This is my earth, it's right in front of the computer. Here is my moon and essentially what a solar eclipse is is when the moon gets completely the shadow blocks the sun completely and i would just have um, students um, practice that and see how that works and then the solar or lunar is when the earth gets between the um, sun and the moon um, so we go over that and talk about eclipses, probably look at an eclipse calendar to see when they could see eclipses, go over solar eclipse, um, like protocol, safety. I know that there's supposed to be another solar eclipse soon. Um, there's one in, in North America but it only has to be 2019 in the book, so that's sad. But I know that there's somewhere that there's one coming up soon, so I would probably, if if I can teach this during that time, that month of leading up to the solar eclipse and then seeing it, that would be pretty cool. Um, a lot of these things I remember doing in classrooms. I remember doing one of these as a kid. Um, I don't actually know if I ever looked at the tides, but... I think it's a really cool way to look at um, how the moon affects the earth. Um, so yeah, that is my long presentation. I wish we could have done it in class because it would have been fun to do together. Fun to fill this all out um, with our table partners.
fun to do the whole eclipse thing, which I think we might have done with the moon phases, but that is my long presentation. Um, pretty easy minimal um, equipment, which is kind of my thing because I want to be able to use whatever I have available. Um, and I know that there's a lot of things that I might not have availability. So finding things like the internet, which at that point in time when I'm teaching, it'll probably be all one-on-one -on -one anyways. Um, I can find balls. I mean, the PE teacher would likely have some. Um, so they're pretty cheap. So that is my long presentation. Thank you for watching.